Hi everyone, Phil Rowley here and thanks again for joining me at my tying bench. Today I'm tying you the balanced minnow in fat head configuration. This has proven to be a great fly to suspend under an indicator in and around weed beds and of course cast and strip because the jigging action of a balanced fly is just tough for fish to resist. If you like this video be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more videos and if you want to get notifications hit that bell and you'll be notified when I have a new video up on my channel. Check the comments section below for all the tools and materials I use to tie the balanced minnow in fathead configuration. So join me and let's get going. Fathead minnows are widespread across North America and trout and char love to eat them. My balanced minnow in fathead configuration works great in and around the shallow weed beds fathead minnows prefer to inhabit. Here are the materials you will need to tie this fly. So I'm now going to tie you the balanced minnow fathead version. I tie this fly in three different color variations. We'll show you this one first and I'll show you other ones in future uh, videos. I tie it in this, the fathead variation, an all white one I call white satin, and then a perch variation. Into the jaws of the vise, I put it at Daiichi 4640 number 10. That's I tie this fly predominantly in this, I think all the time in this size. I can't recall tying it in larger or smaller sizes yet. It just works so well here. And uh, really stout, strong hook. Um, this fly works good both balanced under an indicator or cast and retrieve because it's a little jig. So we're going to cover the hook shank with white MFC 6 aught and give this fly, just snap that thread off. So to do that I just pull down on the bobbin to keep the thread under tension and then snap that thread forward. We're going to coat the shank, bring the tying thread back up and let it hang. And then we're going to tie on the pin assembly and I use sequin pins. This Get these at Michael's in the stitchery section, silver and gold. I think it's about eight bucks for six hundred or six bucks for eight hundred or something like that. Not very much. This is the gold pins and the silver. And the beauty of these sequin pins you could certainly use if you saw earlier uh, balance flies I've tied on the channel. Um, I used to cut a common household pin which still works but leaves a ragged end. These are already basically cut to length and that tapered end is nice and thread friendly. So we've just taken a just taken a um, 1 8 inch gold bead. I apologize for the band-aid. I beat my thumb up but we want to keep tying videos for you. Shooting videos for you. So we're just going to lash that on. Nice firm wraps. That's why I'm using the 6 aught. So I've got Good strong thread. You can also use 140 denier works well. Good firm wraps. And I've tied so many of these these uh, flies that I just know that if uh, I have what envision I can get two more beads onto the pin in this area, that's going to be the right balance point. So we're just going to wind that down. And at this point I often, if I was tying a bunch of these, I would whip finish, cut the thread, and um, coat the thread wraps with brushable super glue and set them aside to dry. But since we're tying this continuous we'll just soldier on here. But if you're tying these at home yourself you'd want to build these chassis uh, up and then um, when it's time to tie the fly once they've dried up a little bit then uh, get them in the vise and get going. So we've got the thread hanging just back of the hook pin, of the pin rather, and we're going to tie in a tail because the fat heads are often a, an olivey uh, coloration because they live in and around uh, the weeds so they tend to match their coloration they're not really an open water minnow although you will see them out on of course you will it's not uncommon to see them school up out there but most of the times they like to hug the shallows because it's safer venturing out over into the deeper water exposes them and it's not generally good for a long happy fathead life but it sure makes a lot of fat browns and rainbows so I've just taken a whole plume and stroked these fibers together and I want to pre-measure a tail 
that's about the, sh the length of the shank. So I'm going to come in like so. Transfer that measurement. Now we're just going to take this and I tie this in right behind the pin just to even up the bulk of the sh right now the bulk of the uh, is built up with the pin so I want to tie in a nice sparse tail. don't want it too bushy I want lots of night a light sparse tail is going to move and breathe for you better than a dense tail. This thing will just flicker and move then we're going to cover this up and then come to about the midpoint pull down on the tying thread wrap it around my forefinger bring that thread back up around the shank a couple of times to form a loop and then start working the tying thread back towards the base of the tail and then I rotate the loop vertically and you can see as I advance sorry move the thread back to the base of the tail it's closing those thread strands up tight so they'll pinch and hold the dubbing in place when I insert it and then I'm going to carry the tying thread right back up to the back of the bead and let it hang and I'm going to insert the dubbing tool this is a cow bird style or I think some people refer them to as a crochet hook style and it's got a weighted end I get this from Dr. Slick it works really well for me whatever dubbing tool you like to use I'm going to insert that into the thread loop replace my forefinger and just let that hang try to keep everything from spinning together and the body material on this, I've got it in bulk here, it's called Fathead. It's Arizona Semi Seal, and the color is Fathead Minnow. It's kind of an off white coloration. And we're just going to dub up the body using this dubbing mix. So I'm just going to remove a, a pinch, and it's sparse. I can read through this. Okay? I'm going to open up that thread little twist is formed, that's not the end of the world, and just push that forward and that's one way, if you're having trouble with your dubbing falling out, you know, by just pulling a little down pressure on the tool and sliding it up, it'll hold it, but if you get a couple of turns in there that'll also help lock it in place too, so what I'm doing is opening up the dubbing loop at the base of the tool inserting it, sliding it up into position and I just keep doing that until I load up a nice even dubbing loop. By even I mean there's no bald patches. The, the, the um, dubbing is consistently placed along the length. And I can flare it out and mess, mess around with it with my thumb and forefinger to spread it out. So you don't want it too, you don't want to put too much dubbing in because it'll, it'll all compete with each other and the fly won't breathe properly. I don't feel in the water. So we're just going to load this dubbing loop up from one end to the other nice and consistent and then spin slowly just to get it locked in and then once it's starting to twist I come in with my forefinger give that dubbing tool a twist and then when I remove my forefinger that twist carries on right up the dubbing and I can come in and I can preen out any sort of clump where it's clumped up because that mohair likes to twist and wrap around. And then for added help, I'm going to come in with my dubbing brush here. Pull out the remnants of other flies. And I'm just going to carefully brush and pick out any of the clumps and free up the long mohair strands. Semi seal. This is a blend of the flashy mylar, a little bit of nylon to help soften things, and then the mohair strands flow and breathe. We want to free them up. These these fibers will breathe and, and then suggest a translucency. You know, looks like a minnow's body. Alright, and now we're just going to start winding our dubbing forward. Get that placed, and once I get a wrap or two around, then I come in with my thumb and my beat up thumb and forefinger and just 
one wrap in front of the other and as I wrap I preen those fibers back. I spent all that time freeing them up. I don't want to trap them down by winding the body. And just brush them back. And just keep brushing them back and wind them right up to the rear of the bead. Let's go right on by that hook eye the hook. So I'll tuck it back on a 45 just to make sure it's in there. Pack it in. I'm just going to wind it. Whoops. And I somehow got the dubbing tool out. And that happens. So that's why you always have your hackle pliers nearby. Grab on. Keep winding forward. right up, tie it off once, twice, behind, couple in front, trim, and then we will give this fly, brush it some more, we still got some work to do on it, this would probably be a good little pattern right like this, but we're humans, we have to complicate things, so we want to make this look more and more like a minnow, so we've still got some other th features we're going to add here, but I just want at this point give it a bit of a brush because I won't be able to when I start to add the other features because I might disturb them. So just like that. And now we're going to add some lateral flash in there. And to do that I'm using uh, crinkle mirror flash in pearl. Love this stuff, but it's really flashy. So I'm just going to reach in, I've got a notch cut in the package, and I'm going to reach in and use my scissors points to come in and just pull out one strand. Because I'll get the whole length, I've got a whole long, about, well, I can't quite see it, but it's about 12 inches long. I'm going to cut it in half because I'm going to use two sides of this. I'm take the crinkle mirror flash. I'm going to lay it across the barrel of the bobbin, double or fold it around. It's right behind the bead. I'm going to hold both strands along the side and just wrap back onto the dub body slightly, just about a, and just to get that to trail back and flow along the sides. It's going to get held in place a lot better by a set of eyes, so we're just going to trim off the length, and I've got enough left over. So I've advanced the thread again, so it's right up behind the bead. Taking another length of crinkle mirror flash, fold it around the thread, off the bobbin onto the thread, rotate the thread back around to the other side, hold it in place, and then wind back with not super tight wraps. But firm wraps, if you got super tight, it'll flare the flash of blue material. And then we're just going to come in and kind of grab all of it and trim them all to the same length. And when we're finished, these will be tucked along the fly when we're done. So one of the things that the fatheads have too is um, sort of variegated markings down, you know, along their side barring. And, you know, years ago we used to use materials like... Uh, dyed mallard flank or teal, but those are, to wrap around the hook as a hackle, they're quite um, stiff. But uh, MFC recently came out with this barred schlappen in olive black. And I'm just going to take out a feather. Don't really care about the length. It's nice and soft and webby. I'm going to tie that in wet fly style, so I mean that the, um, the dark most prominently marked side of the feather, the convex side, if you can see, it's not always easy on schlappen and similar feathers. It's a lot easier to see on partridge and pheasant rope and things like that. But I'm just going to, again, right behind the hook eye, lash this in place, trim away that stub, make sure that's well tied in, come around, 
and we're just going to make one wrap and I'm just pre-training the fibers to flow back so there's one I'm making sure that I don't affect the positioning of the lateral line there's two and three coming around and we'll just go in tie this off tie this off then I grab everything including the untrimmed tip and wrap back to secure and then come in and nip out the tip section just like that I'm going to give that a pinch you can take your dubbing brush or a toothbrush and just I just brush it like this to break up I want those fibers to because when this fly gets wet it's going to flow back and suggest the or the barred markings of the natural minnow. And then I'm going to come in and whip finish. And I'm not too concerned about neatness of the head here because we're going to glue a set of eyeballs on this fly. So we've tilted the fly on its side. I'm going to take some of the Solaris thick and I'm just going to place a drop there. Put the lid back on temporarily. And then for the eyes, we're using 4 millimeter gold red Jurassic eyes from MFC. I'm going to take dubbing needle get one off of the on the adhesive back and I come in with my forefinger and just pull that off like so and then I'm going to turn this over so I can sort of see the back side I want to make sure this is positioned right right I've got lots of working time I'm going to make sure my fibers are where they want to be give it a quick zap and that eyes locked in place. I'm going to turn the fly on its other side. This is where you want to make sure all your materials are positioned relatively well. Flash is trailing down the side because the eyes are good. putting the eyes in helps adhere them. So we're going to do the same trick again. I'm going to come up, get a little bit on the end of the dubbing needle. You don't need too much to start with. You're just going to get that sitting there get another eye off of the card onto the dubbing needle make sure I'm happy with the position of that eye hold it down and again come in just hold it And I've set the light to pulse. We'll give a zap on the other side. And those eyes are pretty firmly affixed. So now all we got to do is fill in around them. So we do that by working in top and bottom of the fly. So we're just going to fill in around the the eye itself, make sure our, our feathers are all where we want them to be. What I'm going to do is take some of the thin formulation come in and put a little drop, this flows, it's a little more viscous just let that sit, sort of level itself out have my light nearby, hold everything in place and zap it. And then we'll rotate the fly the other way. 
definitely like you know that eye is sitting on the other side. I don't think that's good. We have some movement in it. And then we'll have a little drop like so. That'll start to lock all those eyes in place. As long as they're on the side. I might add another layer on top. So I do it's better to do it in, in stages just to, to fill in. You can really lock everything in place. Just let that flow a bit. And the thin stuff will run around a bit and lock everything down. And we'll probably give one more coat. All we're doing is filling up the little valley between the eyes, letting that flow. And then last but not least, I like to, just to help the glow of the eyes themselves, and put a little bone dry right on the eyeball and come in and that further protects that eye and gives it some additional shine. So we'll do the other side too. Give that a zap. And there you have the finished balanced ice minnow in the fat head scheme. You can tie them all white, which is white satin, a white marabou tail, and the schlappen in, a, in the uh, uh, gray and black, I think they call it, but we'll show that on a future one. And then the, the perch variation is kind of a burnt orange theme with the Crowley perch uh, dubbing. There's the balance minnow in the fat head configuration. For more information on fly fishing, and still water fly fishing in particular, please visit my website at flycraftangling.com. Here you will find fishing tips, fly patterns, articles, information regarding my seminars and schools, along with links to my blog and mine and Brian Chan's online still water fly fishing store. You can also visit our store directly at stillwaterflyfishingstore.com. While you're visiting my site, please join my mailing list to receive my educational newsletters. You can also follow me through my social media channels. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. Please take the time to watch my other videos as well. Thanks for watching.